happen. One of the biggest lies within our society has to do with the issue of abortion. And I want to speak for the next few moments on four truths about abortion. Because there's a lot of lies out there, four truths about abortion. And this is why I'm here and not laying at my house right now, because I felt like I wanted to be able to give this part and to declare this. There are a lot of lies. And I want you to know if you've ever struggled in this area, if this is a part of your history that is not coming with a whole bunch of shame is not what's about to happen. This is a safe place of healing, and we love you. And anybody who can hear the sound of my voice in this room, on the web, on radio, on CD, before I even get to these things, if you have a pregnancy that is of concern to you, you come to us and we will help you. We will not shame you. We will help you. We are connected with many people that can help you and find uh, what you need at that moment or you've dealt with it in your past. We will help you. So with that, we move in to thinking about this thing, this lie that we've received in our society about abortion. It's the 37th anniversary of Roe v. Wade on January 22nd. Since that time, 48 million babies have been aborted. 48 million babies. In 2003, more children were aborted than Americans died in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam War, and Gulf Wars combined. In this, it's an average cost of $372 for an abortion. I just hated that. For $372. And in the second, the second largest abortion clinic in the world is in Houston, Texas. Ugh, that's what that march to Mars is going to be about. I'm going to try to be there. Not to be redneck, screaming, red face, slamming my fist, but to be prayerful, walking, saying, no, this is not right. The first truth of abortion is this. Abortion is a theological, not a theological issue, not a civil rights or political issue. Abortion is a theological issue, not a civil rights or political issue. We have been lied to that this is a political or civil rights issue. It is not. Life is a theological issue. Therefore, politicians cannot answer when life begins because it is not a political issue. The government should be honored. We should respect it. We need the government. We should bless the government. That's a great thing. But government policy has begun to walk over into theology. Theological issues of when life is life and what marriage is, those are theological issues, not political issues. And when they were moved to be theological issues and begin to be theological issues, and man and man and woman and woman is okay, then who is to say man and man and woman is not okay? Man and man and man is not okay. Why not? There's no foundation anymore. So this is a theological issue. And our theology and our policy has become so intertwined in these years that we as believers are forced to vote our theology over our policy. There may be somebody you agree with more policy-wise, but theologically, you don't. You're not electing a pastor. I'm not electing a pastor. We're electing a politician. We realize that. It doesn't have to come down to what do you think about baptism. That's not what I'm saying. It's coming through on these life issues of marriage and of abortion to be able to say, you know what? I prefer your view on what we're going to do with the roadways. But hey, you know what? That's not eternal. This is. So the truth is this is a theological issue, not a political or civil rights issue. Number two, the consequences of abortion are lasting. The consequences of abortion are lasting. That is truth. People think that this is just a solution of a problem. It is not a solution of a problem. I wouldn't even put it in a problem category. I would say a child's not a problem. It is not a solution of a problem. It is an exchange of problems. Remember in high school, there was this girl that I was friends with. We were in the same PE class. She wasn't feeling well. I started asking her about why she didn't feel well, and she was pregnant. And she asked if I would help give money so that she could have enough money to get an abortion. 
And I was a student, and I didn't know a whole lot, but praise the Lord, I did not do it. And I tried to help her in other ways, you know, and tried to tell her about the Lord. But, you know, it was, I think back to that moment, and I think, goodness gracious, I'm just so glad I didn't do that. But, you know, you make a lot of silly decisions when you're young, don't you? Trying to help somebody out, you think you're helping them, and you're not. And just getting close to that scares me. So if you've been all the way in that, you know more than anything else. So come to Christ. Allow Him to wash you clean. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Number three, it is a child. It is a child. Truth about abortion, it is a child. It's not just a mass of cells. Not just a mass of cells. It is a child. And if you've gone through and now these things are just beginning to hit your mind, the table uh, right outside across from the corner books in that hallway. We've got some, some crisis pregnancy folks here today to just help and counsel people that have gone through this or are struggling with this. We've got table 18 is the adoption ministry here to be able to talk about these things. When it comes on and the light comes on in your mind, no, it is a child. The heartbeat happens at about six weeks. A hundred percent of the time for a hundred percent of history, this Embryo and sperm has resulted in a child. It's never resulted in a chicken, never resulted in an animal, never resulted in anything else but a child. If 100% of the time, for 100% of history, it's resulted in a child, why would we trace it back and then say it's not a child? It is a child. And its heart is beating even at six weeks. The heartbeat is there. Many folks will say, well, I believe in a woman's right to choose then let me say this to you. If you believe in a woman's right to choose, then you, by your own statement, could never abort a female child. Because you must, by your own statement, allow that female child to be born and then allow that child to choose whether they will fight for life or not. Will that child choose to breathe? Will that child choose to fight for life? To say a woman's right to choose is also to say it is completely foreign to be able to abort a female child because you must give a woman her right to choose. Now, let me just throw something in for the brothers. We don't want to be aborted either, okay? (laughs) But in particular, these female children children. 100% of the time, it's a baby. Now, I don't know how we can save whales and abort babies all in the same society. Some by the same people talking about it. The only thing I can say is there is a deceiver. And he is alive and he is active and his name is Satan. And it is a child. If it's not, then what is it? If 100% of the time it becomes a child, what is it? If you believe in a woman's right to choose, then you must also believe in a girl baby, a female baby going all the way to full term and then give her the right to choose whether she tries to live or not. Another argument that happens is people will say with rape and incest, that that makes it right and we just don't want rape and incest to happen. Statistics tell us that it's 1% of the cases of abortion are because of rape and incest. 99% of them are because of other reasons. The higher statistic that I saw in my research was about six to seven percent. But most of the statistics I saw were one percent of rape or incest being the reason for the abortion taking place. 